We've got some breaking news on FT. That's what we're here for. Fans Ooh, already getting involved. What Ready we for got, it. Baby? What we... <clears throat> Boom. Talk to me. Jeff passing first with it. Star closer, Josh Hader, and the Houston Astros are in agreement on a wow. five-year, $95 million contract. The deal contains no deferrals. It is the largest present-day value contract for a reliever in baseball history. And you wow. might be thinking, what? Edmund Diaz was low hundos. No, he had deferrals in there. It brought the number down. I'll get you all the info in just a sec. But first off, before we get into the money and the record-breaking Josh Hader contract, Houston getting now a one-two <laughs> punch at the back end of their bullpen mm. of Josh Hader Mm-mm. and Ryan Presley. Todd Father, that changes things, man. Houston it Astros have been good for game. a long time, but th- <laughs> that 8-9, are you kidding me? And, and oh, like man. Kratz has talked about, it's really that 7-8-9 or even 6-7-8-9 with Ryan Abreu, and you can get multiple outs in a playoff or a big game scenario from those guys beyond three outs. What do you think? I think that's unbelievable. I think it's solid. It's it's one thing to talk about it. It's one thing to see it going fruition. <clears throat> and for them, Houston, that's a huge, huge pickup. Spend the money. They finally did, and good things do happen. This is a really big pickup for them. I mean, with the lineup they have and the people they have, oh wee, that 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 hurts these other teams in the AL West for sure. And you know, kudos to them. You know, that's the first time I've ever I've been happy for the Astros. But yes. Very good pickup, <laughs> and that's just calling a spade a spade. Solid, solid pickup right there by the Astros. I think I have, I, have, I guess I got to stick to my shtick here. Like, I got to stick to my theory. They're not getting hater for a one year jaunt here. Mm-hmm. This team isn't just like, well, you know, to be hater and you're done here in the next three years. No, this to me, this signifies and it should signify what type of players they're going to be in the market in the next five years. This should signify to Tucker, we want you around. And this is one of the reasons. I get it. You always get to hit behind, you know, you get to hit behind your Don. You, you know, you most likely get to hit with Jose. But this is an opportunity for them to, yes, keep that bullpen intact for the next two years as long as the mutual options get picked up, all that stuff with Presley. But you're picking up a player that is setting a tone with a five-year – you said five years, right? Five, 95? Correct. Five, 95, baby. It sets your team up for a five-year span. And to me, players want the money. Absolutely, they want the money. But they want to know that this next seven-year contract that they're going to get, the big-time players, not the single-year guys, is going to matter that there is an organization that wants to win and they don't have the value in the minor leagues like they did before. So this is one of, this is the first step. This is the first step in, to me, three or four moves that they're going to make in the next few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicholas with a question in the chat said, well, what happens to Presley? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, he's on the team and now he pitches the eighth instead of the ninth. I mean, we're all clear on that one, right? Haters the closer. Easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can go either way. I mean, I Josh I, is bro, <laughs> listen. I, I, you would know more than me, Kratz. I don't understand when players get so pissy about it. you. Just signed a five year 95. Put me any, put me in any, any inning you want. This is my deal of the century. I'm I, making my money and I am a closer. Guess what? You want to put me in the eighth and have Presley throw until all of a sudden he doesn't do it, then we'll switch it up. And it depends. He's a lefty and righty, of course. It depends on who's up. I would say. Look at the lineup and be like, all right, and then we can figure it out. There. that I think you hit it there because all I've heard about Presley and all I know about Hayter is these dudes want to win. They are here to win. And if you go into a bullpen, if you go into a pregame bullpen meeting, you have a chart and you know who matches up best against who. Mm-hmm. So let's say – Let's say you're going you're you're going against the Rangers because they're going to play the Rangers and you have a split against Marcus Simeon who hammers heaters and you're going 9-1-2 in the 8th inning to me you're going to bring Presley in to face 9 hitter probably a pinch hitter then you're going to go Simeon and then whoever's hitting second if Seager's hitting second maybe that's not a great matchup but they're going to Joe Spada's going to He's going to really be able to stack 
the times in the games where he can go to either guy for better matchups. And it doesn't necessarily mean left, right. It more Mm -hmm. means they're stuffed because both of those dudes can get righties and lefties out, but it's going to be their stuff. Who can't hit the balls at the top of the zone? If Josh Young can't hit the ball at the top of the zone, I need to have Hader in the game. If we have a guy that can hit a heater, maybe I need to have Presley in the game. And it really just, it shrinks the game by so much. We haven't even talked about Brian Abreu. Yeah. Good, good pickup, man. Yeah. Awesome. And you saw that, that second follow up from passing that he beats the Diaz contract because mm-hmm. Diaz present day value is about 93 mil because it's, there's some deferrals in there. Yes. There are other teams, but that besides the Dodgers that do deferrals and have been doing deferrals for years. It yeah. just got more attention with someone like Shohei Otani. But 68 million is a lot more. 68. 68- 68 million is a lot more deferrals. But you know who's on the line now? Devin Williams. Devin Williams is super juiced. He's like, whoa, if this is what Hayter and Diaz got, he's like, yes, let's go. Yes, that's right. I mean, he's still got some time, though. He's got two two years years. left before he gets the free agency. But, yeah, of course, any big reliever on that front. And also, this should just elevate that market in general, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, We've had a freeze because no one's going to spend. It's just been a little bit of a stalemate. Team finally got up to the price that he wanted. Josh Hader and his team were very specific behind the scenes. I was told this from, I'm not the world's top insider, but I I spoke to people behind the scenes that were like, it's a very simple goal. He wants to go to a place where he wants to be, which I think Josh Hader in Texas, that's a natural fit. You know, he loves the great outdoors. And um, and there's no state income tax, so he's actually even richer than you mm. think. He's Ooh. actually way richer than Edwin Diaz. Uh, richie, side richie. Note. So Edwin Diaz gets an extra, like, I'm going to estimate here, 15% taxed. Josh Hader doesn't get any of that from the state tax. Mm. So add that bad boy up, too. Don't forget about that. But his camp was very clear. We are beating the Edwin Diaz contract. Not soaring past it. We are beating it, right? The credentials are better. The age is close enough. That's it. He's automatic in the ninth inning. And for all the people that have been, I think, overplaying the story about him not giving a team more than three outs in the regular season, that will change. He's not going to be the hater of old where he's coming in for two, three innings on a regular basis. But you will be able to stretch him out on occasion. If it is September and the Astros are in a divisional race and they want to get an extra couple outs at it, he will do that. A lot of that had to do with him making sure that he stayed health, healthy and self-preservation so that he could line himself up to be with a team that kind of took him more seriously, right? The Brewers said, screw you it in arbitration. I don't blame him at all, right? He had a role. He very specifically filled it. Anyone would take those three outs to be automatic, like Josh Hader has given uh, the Brewers and then, of course, the Padres over the last couple of years. So props to them. This is freaking huge for Hader and it'll elevate the market. There's a lot of free, free agent relievers. I think that'll now suddenly fly off the board. Nary, Stevenson, etc. None of them will touch the money that Hader just got, but all of them right now are looking at this contract and going, hell yeah. And they're calling their agent right now and saying, Hey, look, that price that we've been talking about, I think we might be able to get it. Cause also I have to imagine there were other teams in on him. We'll hopefully find out about that afterward, but this is the perfect icing on top of your cake for a World Series team or a contender, right? There were people that said, why not the Dodgers? Why not the Yankees? Why not the Phillies? Why not the Rangers? I think those were all teams that I would have thought could have landed someone like Hayter. Yeah. And I I think this is a shocking upset just based on the history of the Astros. Jim Crane does not do this. This is by far the most money he's ever given out in free agency. This team does not go past the luxury tax like this, and currently they are flying past it. So I'm surprised, but I'm super thrilled for Astros fans. This sets the tone. I mean, this team's been profiting their asses off for years. They put a great product on the field, and people show up, and they're spending more money towards it. He's not cheap. Some fans in our chat, when we talked about uh, the team going after Hater, were like, oh, he won't do it. He's cheap. They're not cheap. No. I mean, they're they're soaring past $200 million in terms of their payroll. I've, I've never called this team cheap. They're just more measured they don't go crazy they're not in yankee met padre dodger land uh the the red sox were in on hater too (laughs) (laughs) we have to put this up derek we got to post that 
Red Sox were in on Hader, as in they thought he would be really cool if he joined the team for a random price that would not have gotten the job <laughs> done. But they're, shucks, they're trying. They're trying out there. They're in on everybody right now. <laughs> You're crazy. Are you guys shocked, though? In terms of the the background of what the Astros are from a financial component, they don't spend like this. They do not do this. We, we talked about this $58.5 million dollars under the Jim Crane era is the largest money they've ever given out to a free agent. This is double that almost. Yeah, but this is a different era. This is this it might still be Jim Crane. Jim Crane is never afraid to spend money. Don't don't even get me started on like, okay, well, you haven't spent the money from 2017 to 22 or the years before 17. Like they're right at that first luxury tax threshold. But I think they're seeing that they don't have the opportunity to do what they did before in the sense of that core coming up from the minor leagues. Okay, we're just going to keep cycling through the next core. They've run that for a long time. To me, I'm just repeating myself, it's signifying a change of the market, but also signifying the fact that they still want to win. There's plenty of organizations that would take their two World Series rings, put them in their pocket, take all that money for the next couple years, put it in their pocket, and say, you know what? You know, our run with this with this core kind of ran out, and now we got to rebuild again. Not ever saying the word rebuild, not ever say tanking, but they're not doing that. They're not doing that, and they absolutely run Houston right now, especially with the Cowboys stinking. The Astros are the team in Texas right now. And they pick up innings. I mean, this guy's been one of the more consistent, durable relievers. They pick up innings. They, they lost a lot of innings. They lost Maton. If they don't re-sign Maton, Marys, Stanek, Kendall Graveman out for the season. Those four dudes, how do you replace them? This is a great way to do it. Yes, it this is. is the start. This is the start, and I think maybe they get one of those other guys. I think they get they re-sign a Stanek after, after seeing this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right, and <laughs> and I, I said that they're the team in Texas. I get it. The Rangers winning the World Series, they're <laughs> technically the team in Texas. Yeah, no, but, they're the team. But this move may have been because of the fact that the Rangers won the World Series, because we got to still retake that. They don't want to become the JV. Texas squad. They want to make sure everybody knows, yes, they just got their one, and that's really neat. We have two, and we still are players in this market, and it made the American League West. I said it earlier in the show. This next month is going to prove who is my pick. Right now, the Astros took an early lead, but they mm. but the Rangers still have a month to go to build this roster. Rangers still. They're the champs. You can't. I, I get it. I know what you're saying, but until they get knocked off that throne, it's still the Rangers to me. Fair. This is more than I thought the Astros were going to do, though. I mean, I, if you told me, hey, are the Astros going to spend $100 million in the offseason, which they've surpassed that because you, even just Caratini alone puts them over mm -hmm. the top there in terms of money spent, I would have taken the under. So props to them. Dana Brown, the general manager, did say at the winter meetings they weren't going to overspend for relief pitching. I'm paraphrasing, but – I don't they didn't overspend, but they spent. They spent a lot on relief. Yeah, but they didn't overspend. Now. No. They weren't desperate. No, and it's a fair, it's a fair contract. That's the did thing. Did you did you see what else is in the contract here? Joel Sherman put up. Can we put that post up right now? What is it? Oh, yeah. I see it. We might need a sec to put it up, but I can read it. Yeah. He would receive a million dollars if he wins the Mariano Rivera or Trevor Hoffman reliever of the year award. That's the AL and the NL version. Obviously, he's in the AL, but I guess in case he ended up on another team. Largest bonus ever associated with that award. I like it. I like it. That's a, a little incentive piece, Nuggets. I like that stuff. To me, that means he's more along the lines of closer status. Like yes, he is that, I'll, that's, a, that's solidifies it for me. Yeah, I mean, to me, I mean, sure, they could just flip it and be like, we don't care about that bonus. But usually that's in there for a reason. Like, hey, go out there, be our, be the best freaking closer on a year-by-year -year basis, and we'll give you an extra million bucks. Good stuff, man. Good stuff yeah. to finish off the weekend. Hell yeah, good stuff to finish off the weekend is right. So congrats to Hater and to the Houston Astros.